And, well, that's that. Travis, you messed up son of a TV thrower. Nice to see our friend from Origins is okay. And if anything's gonna get this video blocked in Germany, that's it. But for now, welcome to Shepherd's Glen. Yes, it's time to start the game proper. Well, after some loading screens and tooltips and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, Travis's five o'clock shadow has bloomed into a full forest. Thanks for the ride. So, yes, we're officially in the town of Shepherd's Glen. My house. I need to go home. But before we do that, there are some other things to do here in town, such as trying to go back the way we came. And we can dodge roll. I should head back. We're not getting out that easily, though. It just immediately turns us around, then we just get a question mark on the map for going that way. There's also this building over here. This is Dr. Fitch's office. It's been in this location since before I was born. It's locked. And so this too gets marked on our map. Is there something over here he was looking at? Investigate. It's the banner for the 150th Anniversary Parade. Shepherd's Glen 150th Anniversary Celebration, Saturday and Sunday, September 20th and 21st. Two big days, rain or shine. Events kick off Saturday with a parade down Main Street, 10 a.m. Food, games, rides, dunk tank featuring Mayor Bartlett. Period costume contest. Prizes will be awarded. Live music and entertainment by Eye of the Storm. Admission is free. Bring the kids. Have to wonder if Eye of the Storm is actually a reference to anything real. Like, for example, I know in the game Alan Wake, they featured a song by Poets of the Fall who did the theme of the game and also played as a band called Old Gods of Asgard in the game itself. So I wonder if that's anything like this. Anyway, unlike Zelda, rolling is not faster. But it's still funny. Judge Holloway. Hey. I didn't know you were home. Does your mother know? She didn't say anything. No, I, I haven't talked to her. Actually, I haven't really talked to anyone. I'm not planning on sticking around for long. Oh. Well, I hope you get a chance to catch up with Elle. I'm sure she'd love to see you. She's still here? <laughs> of course. You know how it is. No one ever leaves this place. Yeah, I guess. This town's so quiet. It's changed. Mm. Yes. Not for the better, I'm afraid. You should go home. See your mother. Perhaps I'll see you later. You look well, by the way. Thanks.
So determined as they are that we should go home, I actually have business here at Town Hall first. May as well check it out while we're already here. It's kind of exposition central, and there are a couple of items I want to get here. The place seems big and convoluted, but it all kind of links up at this central room. So first thing is the second photograph, Mom and Judge Holloway talking in our house. This looks like a keyhole. I always thought the symbol was odd. Dad always got angry if I played with this. And now, a talky bit. The history of Shepherd's Glen is one of opportunity and enterprise. First settled nearly a century and a half ago, its founders came here as pilgrims, searching for a new home to practice their faith and ensure the prosperity of their four families. It soon flourished into a thriving small town. Shops and businesses sprung up on what is now Main Street. The turn of the century brought tourists eager to explore the region's lakes and rivers, and with tourists came more business. In the 1950s, many of the original municipal buildings, such as the town hall and the library, were restored. The 1990s encouraged further investment, modernizing Shepherd's Glen as it headed into the new millennium. But throughout its success, Shepherd's Glen has always managed to remain a close-knit community, maintaining the same ideals on which it was founded. One can only hope that the founding families would be proud if they saw the town as it is today. This is Edith Holloway, one of the town's founders. My father hated the Holloways, but Margaret always treated me well. She and Elle even sent me letters when I left for the war, more letters than anyone else sent. Sometimes I wonder how things would have turned out if I were born into a different family. One of Mayor Bartlett's ancestors was a town founder. Bartlett's been mayor since I was born, and no one ever ran against him. I guess family heritage counts for a lot here. This is Cornelius Fitch, another of Shepherd Glenn's four founders. I always forget that Dr. Fitch is his direct descendant. Doc never really liked to talk about town history. It's a photo of Shepherd's Glen back when Main Street was still a dirt road. So the town had four founders, but we've only seen portraits of three of them. They're just not going to tell us about the fourth yet. And now, time for a little more exposition. It's a newspaper article. What should have been a normal school run home turned into tragedy last week when a freak thunderstorm washed a school bus into the raging torrent of the Toluca River. The normally placid river, swollen by nearly a week of record-breaking rainfall, was running almost 15 feet higher than normal. Mark Ward, the conscientious school bus driver for Toluca County, was unprepared for what he found when entering Riverview Road that runs parallel with the river. The fast-moving water eroded the soil underneath the asphalt, leaving it unsupported. The road suddenly collapsed as the bus pitched into the roaring river below, carried along a white water ride for a quarter of a mile amongst the screams of the petrified children. The bus became lodged under the aptly named Hope Bridge. Dr. Martin Fitch, M.D., had just finished a house call and was on his way back to the office, following directly behind the school bus when the road gave way. Managing to stop in time, Dr. Fitch got out of his car, braving the downpour, and ran alongside the river for a quarter of a mile when the bus finally became jammed under the bridge. Without a thought for his own personal safety, Dr. Fitch jumped into the river and swam towards the bus. After breaking the rear window, he climbed inside to assess the situation. Inside, he found a terrible scene. The driver, trapped by a safety belt, had been killed when the front of the bus flooded. All of the second and third grade students survived without major injury, but appeared severely frightened by the events. The children were evacuated to the nearby Alcamilla Hospital in Silent Hill to recuperate after their ordeal. During the evacuation, the situation took another terrifying turn. His leg trapped by the partially crumpled front of the vehicle, brave eight-year-old Alex Shepard was unable to move. Dr. Fitch knew that if Alex didn't drown, the cold waters of the Toluca River would put him into cold shock as his core temperature plummeted and he succumbed to hypothermia. Time was critical. The doctor quickly stripped off his shirt, taking a hold of the boy. He wrapped his arms as tightly as he could around him, and then waited for the rescue crews to reach them. The heat and warmth of the doctor's body may well have been the only thing that saved Alex's life that day. It took the fire crews nearly four hours to finally free Alex from the wreckage of the school bus. During the entire time he was trapped in the bus, Dr. Fitch never left his side. For his feat of bravery, the city council gave their highest award to Dr. Fitch, along with the key to the city. 
Though tragedy struck for Martin Ward, the potential loss of all those children was averted by the selfless act of one man, Dr. Martin Fitch, M.D. So, being Alex Shepard, our life was saved by Dr. Fitch. Nice to know. So coming around here, there's this little case here. And it's got something really good inside. The serum. Achievement unlocked. Kaufman's handiwork. Found one serum. This is another collectible item, like the photos and the drawings, but this one is really good. This is actually a health item. I like to use them as soon as I get them, because I had an incident once where I was playing the game, and all the serums I had collected over the course of the game just suddenly vanished. An experimental drug that'll boost my health, I hope. It's actually a full heal item, but beyond that, it extends your health meter, so the more of these you find and use, the more health you have. Very nice. I think there's a total of eight in the game, so it definitely pays to try and find them all. And, of course, there's also an achievement for getting them all as well. Pay no attention to the guy running through town hall with a knife. I'm sure it's nothing. Hey, Judge Holloway. Can I ask you a question? Sure, Alex. What is it? The town seems empty. All the stores are closed or boarded up. What's going on? It's complicated, Alex. A lot of things have happened since you left. I really think you ought to just go home. I noticed a banner out front that said something about an anniversary. Yes. The town's 150-year anniversary. But wasn't that celebration, like, years ago? I thought I remembered being here for it. You're right. Things tend to stay in one place around here. <laughs> I guess it's time we took that down, huh? Was that when all the businesses started closing? I'm not sure, Alex. It's been a while. I was just curious. You need to go home, Alex. Your mother's not been well. She needs you. Well, what's wrong? Is she okay? Go home, Alex. Your mother needs you. We can talk later. Go home, Alex. Go home, Alex. Go home, Alex. Well, geez, I can take a hint. If you don't want me around, just say so. We also have a health drink in here. And kind of an odd thing to note on that. All the health items that we got during the nightmare, we still have them. Kind of creepy. Though we don't have the flashlight anymore. We also have a save point here, and this is pretty much where we're going to call it for now. We've made some good progress, I think. So let's go ahead and save and quit for now. And we'll resume here next time. So for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the project so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.